acne vulgaris defined as a chronic inflammatory disease of pilosebaceous unit which is characterized by polymorphic cutaneous lesions and the onset by puberty let's talk about the etiology first is androgen stimulation of the sebaceous gland second is increased sebum production from sebaceous gland number third is keratin plug formation in follicles now the fourth is increase in common cell propionic bacterium acnes the new name of this bacteria is qt bacterium acnes let's discuss the pathogenesis now as we know with the puberty hit there is a surge in androgen production and these androgen stimulate sebaceous gland and with that stimulation sebum production also increases you know like some of us has oily skin as the sebum is coming out of the gland which making it oily they are so lucky that they are not getting acne vulgaris now in some people the outflow is blocked and acne formation started this block is formed by hyperkeratinization at infundibula or we can say the formation of a keratin plug now this is the stage 1 acne vulgaris in this stage the lesion is called as comedon and what is comedon comedon is a folliculocentric lesions plugged by sebum and keratin the stage 1 lesions comedons are of two types first open comedon which is also known as black comedon second is closed comedon which is also known as white comedon now see if the opening of the hair follicle is wide open the atmospheric air oxidizes the comedon and will look black in color but in closed comedon the opening of follicle is narrow so there is no contact with atmospheric air there is no oxidation so that will look white in color now the treatment of stage 1 acne vulgaris is use of keratolytics use of drugs called retinoids as we know retin words belong to vitamin a and oids means like so these are vitamin a like drugs we prefer topical form of these drugs the drugs are retinoin and second is adapalene usually we prefer adapalene over retinoin but the important thing is both these drugs are photosensitive so we use them in night only come to the next stage stage 2 what happen if treatment is not taken in stage 1 then as we know inside the sebum gland there is a bacteria which grows as a common cell named propiony bacterium acnes and the new name for this bacteria is qt bacterium acnes and in this case as the sebum cannot release through the follicle due to the formation of comedon so the size of the gland increase and there will be a time when it will burst with bacteria released in dermis and that will create dermal inflammation now how will you understand the stage 2 see the inflammation is not that much but there will be some elevation in redness and we call them as a papules but please keep in mind that the stage 2 always have stage 1 lesions the reason behind is there are some new lesions also that will be in stage 1 now for the treatment of stage 2 we need to treat stage 1 also so for the bacteria we will use antibiotics and for stage 1 lesion we will use retinoids so for our treatment of stage 2 topical antibiotics will be clindamycin nadifloxacin clarithromycin or dapsone these are topical antibiotics we will use and we will use topical retinoids with them nowadays the problem of resistance against the drug is increased so with the abused and misused otc means over the counter medication there is antibiotic resistance in some cases so we use benzyl peroxide it releases nascent oxygen which is a bactericidal in nature and it is also a keratolytic in nature it is a very important drug it is also safe in pregnancy come to the third stage in this stage there are pustule formation which cannot be treated with topical drugs so in this stage we start oral antibiotics see in this stage there will be some stage 2 also so our treatment will be 
topical retinoids topical antibiotics with both of these we use oral antibiotics such as doxycycline azithromycin minocycline and lamicycline okay now let's talk about stage 4 in stage 4 there is stage 3 pustule with nodules and cyst means we will call it as a nodulo cystic acne the lesions are very big now for the treatment of stage 4 we will use systemic therapy see indication of systemic therapy is not only stage 4 but also the drug resistant acne vulgaris now what drug we are going to use we are going to use oral retinoids most commonly used oral retinoids is isotretinoin which is a strong sebolytic as well as keratolytic drug and the other drug which we can use is acetretin which is mainly keratolytic now let's talk about the side effect of systemic retinoids the first and the most common side effect is chelitis means dry lips the presentation of patient with this complaint will also show the compliance of patient with the medication now the second is hyperlipidemia which means increase cholesterol and triglyceride level so we will monitor fasting lipid profile the third is hepatitis which is very rare but we should monitor it with liver function test now one very important thing about these systemic retinoids are these are teratogenic means these are category x drug it means not used in pregnancy even there is a period of contraception for these drugs because these drugs stays in system for a very long period so the period of contraception for isotretinoin is 1 month from the day of last drug used and the period of contraception for acetretin is 2 years of contraception from the day of last dose in the last we will talk about precautions because precaution is better than cure isn't it so use cleansers to remove excess sebum and always use water based cosmetics okay and try to avoid oil based cosmetics and for diet purpose avoid food with high glycemic index and the last is avoid milk based product